Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus. We're still climbing the mountain, but we will get to the end of the uh, main story quest here. So, huzzah. Uh, calling the Electrode, which is now a grass type in this game, because it's a wooden Pokeball. I do like the the I do like the new Electrode. Like, I think that I think this was legitimately very clever. Um... The the new what? The so the, the new electrode, electrode in this game is since the pokeballs are made out of apricots instead of out of um, metal and stuff. Metal and stuff. So the, what it's mimicking <laughs> is wooden. So it's a grass electric type instead of just an electric type. That was really clever to me, and it's also a type combination I don't think we had before. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the like. I think. After, because they started doing this like alternate form thing in Gen Seven, and I think after a couple of games of it, I've come on the side of I'm ultimately not a huge fan of it. At the end of the day, um, I it's neat, but it's kind of just showing us the same Pokemon that we've seen before, and I kind of would rather just see new things or have them bring back old things as opposed to feeling like. Okay, well, we need well, isn't that bringing back an old thing, but like uh, with a new twist? I mean, that, that's true, yeah, but I think what I would, instead of, okay, so in Gen 7, they had Rat Ratata and Radicate, right? Um, right. We, we'd already seen Radata and Radicate. I, I have a question. For forever. I have a um, question. Does Sudo Wudo do that thing in this game where he cowers when it rains? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> I love that. Pseudo wood is a rock type. Do you get it? It hates water. There's also like you sprinkle water on it in Gen Two in order to get it to to move. It's like, hey, who's cringe? <laughs> Punches you in the face. And then you can make it a grass type in Gen Nine. Oh god damn it! It's the nose Pokemon. I oh god! I nose pass and Probo pass are like I, I guess I don't really mind nose pass all that much. It's a little like weird. Is that but, thing inconspicuous? Is, right? is that thing blind? <laughs> I mean, its eyes are closed. To be fair, I mean, I like the different the different ride the, the different ride Pokemon. It just kind of the the ride Pokemon I think are a good system. Um, I I understand them streamlining it in Scarlet Violet. Um, well, streamlining it in big old air quotes because it functions in basically the same way. It's just one Pokemon that gains different abilities. Yeah, but you don't have to, like, switch. Is yep. the, oh, is there's the Voltorb. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Wooden Voltorb. I, I've always liked the concept of Voltorbs and Electrodes because they're basically... They're basically old school D and D mimics, but Pokeballs because that's what your items are in 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 Pokemon is their Pokeballs that you pick up. <laughs> I think the original like the original justification was is that like there was somebody ahead of you that like kept dropping their shit and they kept their shit in Pokeballs, so that's why you pick up a Pokeball off the ground and it has like a hyper potion in it or whatever. But... Yeah, I think that's I think that's how it works. Like. <laughs> I, Pokemon lore, rega lore regarding why Pokeballs exist has always been a bit weird, but from what I understand, it's a bit like the capsules in Dragon Ball, where stuff and where stuff shrinks down, and for some reason, Pokemon just have this innate ability to shrink down. Um, in fact, I think they mention that part in this game. They do, for and it's just as confusing as it is in general. So. It, it it's like it's like all Pokemon shrink somehow, and it's. I mean, like, it, it's one of those things that unless it, until it was specifically mentioned, it, I never thought about that because I didn't care. Yeah, it's like the thing goes inside the ball. Well, it yeah, works. but at it. some point, yeah. when you're actually thinking about Pokemon as a concept, especially while you're watching the anime, you have to start. You have yeah. to start wondering what's it like for Pokemon when they're actually inside their Pokeball. And in fact, I mean, did a robot chicken also make a whole sketch about that? Well, I wouldn't know. I hate robot chicken, but um, I mean, like, yeah, it sounds like a it sounds like a rip roaring good time watching a bunch of people make bad jokes with stop motion action figures. Tell me how you really feel. Um, about but like, okay, uh, like, uh, well, I've never seen a robot chicken skit that was funny. So That's okay. That's okay. It's... Moving on from that. Moving on from. Okay, that. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, the the um, what was I oh, saying? There oh was, yeah. 
I do appreciate Gen 7 brought up the what happens to the Pokemon and the PC thing that I really liked is that they get to go on a vacation um, and get beans, uh, which I appreciated. Uh, the Bean Island in Gen 7 is legitimately like their best side mode that they've ever had. I love that thing. Yes, it is. I like the idea that the po- that the, that the PC sends them to some sort of preserve, um, because that 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 just turns the PC into a teleportation device rather than uh, a prison. <laughs> yeah the the idea that you know Mewtwo was you know went on a rampage because it was upset at the idea of humans controlling it and capturing it for study, and then we we put it in a ball and stick it on our computer and never take them out again. Um, was a little dark. Um, <laughs> so I do appreciate that they, you know, get an all access, uh, vacation to, uh, universal resorts, um, was pretty nice. The anime sort of sidestepped a lot of this by having Ash never have more than six Pokemon <laughs> at a time. Um, he, did, he did in Gen 1. He had a Muck, he had a Krabby. Uh, well, oh, yeah. He just those until the very end. He just sent so. them to fucking Professor Oak and, yeah. Ignored it wasn't them. until later seasons where he had teams larger than six and he would like just have them whenever he needed them, you know? Uh, I like in the last season where he just catches a Gengar and a Dragonite and all these other awesome Pokemon because it's like, okay, we're actually going to have him win this time. <laughs> <laughs> Took long enough. I, yeah, I just, unfortunately, like when I heard, oh, Ash won the Pokemon League, I was kind of like, I don't, I was kind of past the point of caring. Um, I was already in the mindset that the Pokemon anime was just something that was never going to end. Uh, ironically it enough, did. it has now actually ended. <laughs> um, but I just, I didn't have any attachment to, you know, Ash's... Because, you know, in the old episodes... Well, I mean, anime, but isn't, isn't it kind of long established, though, that it was no longer about the goal but the journey yeah that's kind of the point i'm getting at is that like in the, the journey was going seasons. in circles though <laughs> yeah i know but it's a nice looking circle yeah it was more just about like his adventures and whatnot um and whether or not he won didn't really matter to me the you know? the um I like the idea of switching to a new protagonist and going on a completely different kind of adventure. I could have done without the am I a light novel protagonist revelation moment uh, that every anime seems to need to have now because every 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 anime character has to be genre savvy these days. But um, yeah. I think I, I'm enjoying what little I've seen. It's hard to not be genre savvy when something is so overdone. Sure it is. It takes place in a goddamn fantasy universe. It can be a fantasy universe where it's not overdone. <laughs> I haven't watched any of the new series yet. Is it okay? Um, I haven't either, so I can't tell you. Imagine if I were to write a fantasy novel in a Dungeons & Dragons universe right now, and every character in that Dungeons & Dragons universe was aware of Dungeons & Dragons cliches. And I'm just like... um. There's a wow. webcomic that I read that's basically that, but it also started in 2003, so, you know. Um, Oof, does it hold up? Uh, yeah, it does. I've been rereading it uh, lately, and it's not bad. Um, although the fact that it started 20 years ago made me, like, made my bones ache a little you, bit. Look, the only, the only D&D universe that's allowed to do what I just described is Forgotten Realms, and that's just because the Forgotten Realms are, by design, so oversaturated with magic and adventure that everyone knows all the cliches because they've all happened a thousand times in that universe by now. But, like, if I were to start a new homebrew universe and everyone was just aware of the cliches without having all that backstory baggage to, to, to give them reason to be aware of it, then it would just be forced, you know? It would be me forcing my meta knowledge onto this onto the world's sense of humor, and it's just dumb. Ugh. I'm sorry, I have my share of pet peeves about pop culture, and I can't resist just going on a rant about them at the slightest provocation. Ignore me! <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to continue poking. Let me, let me get my... Let me get my oh, God, stick. wait. Please don't tell me we're going to be riding a stunky. No. Good. Although it's totally, it totally makes sense that this guy would be using the, st- the skunk Pokemon. Because the look on his face just makes me think stunky. See? That's the look. That's the look right there. His face is a butt. 
You see, he uh, said silent deadliness, aka fart. Fart. Yeah. Oh man, we're we're classy. Oh my god, it's a sphincter when it does its. Oh my god. Oh what? My god. When uh, it did its little animation, where the top of its head like split out, it's a the butt. Yeah, it's, it's cheeks. This spread. is Pokemon's version of Mara, isn't it? Oh yeah, God, I. <laughs> Skuntank, the goatsy Pokemon. What? <laughs> Don't look that up. Hey, how come you get to send out three Pokemon at the same time while well, I can only use one? Uh, because I'm a prick. You know what? That's a good reason. Uh, you know what? This is this is the protagonist flexing. Sure, why not? I mean, you're <laughs> the one with the level 72 Typhlosion here, uh, picking on the the level 22 Pokemon. <laughs> To be fair, the Skun Tank wasn't level 22. Yeah, it was still less than half of your level, though. Gotta love that Final Fantasy X turn order. Final Fantasy X battle system was so good. I wish yes, it was. I wish more games had tried to rip it off than just the Lord of the Rings, the Third Age. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> The Lord of the The Lord of the Rings: The Third Age is like Final Fantasy X with all the fast-paced elements stripped out of it. It's kind of aggravating, honestly. So, Final um, Fantasy X, I feel like, was one of the last Final Fantasy games to be kind of a trailblazer in the genre. No, I'm not trying to say that they're bad um, necessarily, but Final Fantasy X was kind of the last game in the series to have a lot of other games follow in its footsteps and really try to do what it did um because you know when you get to 12 and 13 and 15 and whatnot other franchises just don't care and they're just doing their own thing versus in the mid 90s and early 2000s i, I would argue 10 is not really that much of a trailblazer either though. yeah like in the era that it was released the, 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 turn, the turn order system in final fantasy 10 is kind of just a remix take on grandia um the and after that we have final fantasy 11 which was an mmo which i suppose you could call it a trailblazer because it was one of the early ones um final fantasy 12 is just final fantasy trying to do the bioware thing um which it did relatively well considering no one had figured out how to do that on consoles yet at the time um and uh other than that, we got Final Fantasy XIII, which sucked. Um, okay, that's a little harsh. It had a, it had some interesting combat ideas, but, you know, it has its issues. There, I was nice and diplomatic about it. Um, <laughs> which, Shit, Final, we still have eight minutes left from the park. Then there's Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV, which was trying to do Final Fantasy XI again until it gave up and then rebooted itself and tried to do World of Warcraft again and somehow managed to do it better. Um, then there's, um, 15, which was an elevated spinoff. I was say, what was 15 trying to be? 15 was trying to be an action RPG. And if you go back and look at, like, early, uh, tech demo footage for Versus 13, you can see that it was, tr that it was originally way more ambitious than the game we ended up getting. Like, being able to switch between party members was a feature that you had that you could see in the early versus footage you could switch over to prompto and play for and play third person shooter mode you could switch over to the other characters and they would all have different weapons and stuff and there was a kingdom hearts style sort of command window down in the corner it was very different than what we ended up getting but um final but the, the 15 we ended up getting is hmm, kind of a mess to be honest even in its quote unquote completed form yeah, when I say that 10 trailblazed, I more mean in terms of tone and story versus in terms of gameplay. I, that's actually one of the things that surprised me is that there aren't a lot of games that try hmm. to play like Final Fantasy X, but there are an awful lot of games that try to look and feel like t Final Fantasy X. I don't um, know. I would say the, the biggest culprit of this is Tales of Symphonia, which has literally <laughs> the exact same story. Uh, I was going to ask, like, which came first, Tales of Symphonia or Final Fantasy X? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. <laughs> um, but there's definitely a lot of games that take visual inspiration from that um, and a lot of tonal inspiration from that. I would say Final Fantasy X is the definitive JR, uh, PlayStation 2 JRPG. I, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell how much of that was coincidence and how much of it was... was, was people looking at Final Fantasy X for influence because that was just the beach generation, wasn't it? 
There, there are a lot of beach games on, on PS2. That is true. Although, I don't think we can blame FF10 for Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. That That's its own beast. No, um, we can't. Uh, why am I even here? Uh... You know, I played Extreme Beach Volleyball two. I want to say out of out of morbid curiosity one time. Just trying I to play for the volleyball. I played for the volleyball. Well, I found uh, I found a used copy for dirt cheap at the store, and I was like, okay, people have been telling me that the volleyball here is actually good. So let's see if that's true. The volleyball is shit. I'm just gonna say that right now. It Are is not a fun game to play. People don't actually read it for the articles. I'm shocked. Shocked, I see. No, look, look, look. When say when people say they read those those magazines for the articles, they do have some justification for saying that because on top of like you know having you know uh, evocative photos and pinups and shit, those magazines actually do have articles written by people who know how to write articles. All right, that is not something I can say about whoever designed the volleyball in Extreme Beach Volleyball. They do not know how to design volleyball. They do not know how to design a game that is fun to play. How hard can it be to make a good volleyball game, though? Like, You'd be surprised. Um, it involves a lot of, like... I, you know how you can just make any old tennis game that sucks and feels rigid to play and, and the characters are not that fun to control intrinsically, but you're knocking stop something back and forth so it's technically a tennis game? It's like that. You need to get the feel right, you know? You need to get the different maneuvers that the players can play right, and you need to make it intuitive to, to do. And you need to, and, and, and above all, it needs to feel like everything has a nice physics flow. Because it's fucking tennis. Or volleyball. Same thing, just with more steps involved. Um, and, like, if it doesn't feel right to play, if, it's, if it feels stiff, if it feels restrictive, then it's not a good. It's and then it's not a good take on the game. That's just how it is. Because if you were to, because it needs to actually feel like you're a person playing that knock a knock a ball back and forth sort of free flowing sport. Okay, so having talked about that, let's talk about the giant ball on screen. Uh, I thought we were fighting like the angry sun for a second from Mario. <laughs> Does kind of have that feeling, yeah. It's like, wow, I'm surprised our face didn't melt off. To be fair, the Electroid boss fight can be can be pretty difficult. It does throw a lot of stuff at you. But it's happy I like now. that it did the happy face, but its mouth is still like, er. <laughs> well, Electrode's thing was always that it had this kind of like edgy look to its expression. Like, it was supposed to look like it had an attitude to go with its electrical element. Yeah, but that one kind of looks like the mouth is painted on, so it just <laughs> might be intentional, but... I it's made of wood, so I would imagine so. Uh... Wow, you look just dead today, dude. How are you doing? He's looked dead the entire time. He fell off of, out of a portal in the sky, so... He also has amnesia. Wait, is he actually the su the, the subway guy? He is yes. literally exactly the subway driver from Gen 5. Oh. He also got sucked into the portal somehow. Oh, that's why his costume looks all torn up. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason he's here is because his name has something to do with past, future, and Japanese. Wait, really? So that's it, it? Yes. Yep, it's a pun. I love it when games do that and then don't do anything to make that make sense when they translate it to another language. Well, I mean, when they when they translated it into English in Gen 5, they just picked a name that sounded similar, I'm sure. Wait, or... wait, maybe that's why all the Greek ruins are here, because they fell out of a time portal and landed perfectly standing up as if they were here all along. Listen, the fact that Pokemon has, like, multiple timelines now is something that I just choose not to engage with with my brain. Because um, <laughs> I, I feel like it's just an element that's just there, and there's not an awful lot of thought put into it. They don't do anything, really, with it other than, like, cameos or whatnot. Um, it's not like there's major story... I mean, I guess there's... The closest you can say a major story element is to that is in Gen in gen 9 with the area zero stuff 
But even then, that's just kind of its own thing. It's not even really related to the multiple split timeline nonsense. You know, it's it's just more like, okay, this the fact that there is a multiverse, that that's neat, I guess. But are you doing anything with it? No, nah, they're not really. <laughs> I'm so the only tired. game I can think of in the in recent memory that did anything with the idea that their series had multiple timelines was Persona Q2, where the female protagonist of Persona 3 ends up stranded alone with the Persona 3 main timeline cast who don't know her because their protagonist is the male guy with the emo haircut. Um, and they did some interesting stuff with that situation, but... I think, like, I can't think of another game series that tried to play around with that idea. 